Hi. First, let me say that this video is not about June Osborne from The Handmaid's Tale. But you might notice some similarities, quite big ones actually. When people believe the words in a book have come directly from a god, it's difficult for them to view the words objectively and logically. I want to make this point with a story of a young handmaid we read about in the Bible. And please understand that this is only one story among many of the, in the Bible that I might have chosen, all of which would show the horrible truth about the disgusting God of Israel known as Yahweh. This tale just happened to pop into my head the other night. Sarah, the wife of Abraham, was unable to bear a child. She was quite old and past the age of childbearing. Yet Yahweh promised Abraham that Sarah would conceive and give Abraham a child. Sarah, upon hearing this, laughed, as most of us would under the circumstances. Abraham actually laughed, too. Time went by, and the promise to Sarah and Abraham went unfulfilled. So Sarah came up with a bright idea. She had a, a slave, a handmaid, a woman called Hagar. Sarah instructed Abraham to have sex with the slave and have a child that way. The child will become Sarah's, of course, since... His mother was Sarah's property. Abraham did as Sarah requested, and Hagar birthed a baby boy named Ishmael so Sarah could have herself a baby. But Ishmael was not the promised seed, and eventually Sarah did have a son as well whom she named Isaac. Unfortunately, when Isaac was weaned, Ishmael mocked him and made fun of him. This angered Sarah, and she told Abraham to get rid of both Hagar and Ishmael. Yahweh thought Sarah's idea was a good one, and told Abraham to do as his wife had ordered. So poor Hagar and Ishmael were cast out into the desert to fend for themselves. Christians read this story and view it as some amazing tale about how Yahweh kept his promise to Abraham and Sarah and is thus trustworthy and able to perform magic. But they miss some very important information and very bad behavior on everybody's part, except for poor Hagar. Well, they do notice Ishmael's uh, cruelty to precious Isaac, but that's it. So, I'd like to point out how awful most of the characters in this story truly were. The first thing we notice is that Sarah owned another woman. She owned another woman. And y'all didn't mind, and neither do Christians. It's fine and dandy, according to Christian morality, to own humans like we own cats and dogs and bacon and shrimp and houses and cars. Second, Sarah told her husband to rape this other woman. Sure, sure, the woman was a slave and Abraham could have sex with her just as he could his other human property that he owned. His wife, Sarah. But, as we know, this is pure evil. I mean, we all do know that forcing ourselves on a woman, or a man for that matter, is evil, right? Of course we know it. I want you to think about this. I mean, really think about it. Imagine you're Hagar. Imagine that some woman, maybe your neighbor or your co-worker, tells her husband to rape you and force you to bear his child so his wife, your neighbor or co-worker, can have your child as her own. Do you not see something bad wrong with that? Now, you might say Hagar was perhaps complicit. What, what else could she be? That's like saying a child is complicit when an adult molests the child. Hagar had no recourse here. Tell you the truth, Hagar may have been a child herself. And she probably would have been beaten to within an inch of her life if she tried to fight off Abraham. You know, a good beating would be fine as long as Hagar could get up and walk in a day or two. Third, after doing this evil deed to Hagar, Sarah took Hagar's child from her. Ishmael was Sarah's, not Hagar's. Hagar was Sarah's property, so the boy was as well. You've seen this portrayed in The Handmaid's Tale, right? The handmaid has the baby, and the man's wife takes the baby and raises it as her own. The handmaid, after nursing the child, might be sent off to live somewhere else without her child. Does all of this sound good to you? No? It wasn't good back then either. Time doesn't change the morality of this behavior. For 
Howard, again, after treating Hagar in this awful manner, Sarah became upset over one little indiscretion of the young boy Ishmael, who, by the way, was the child she herself caused to be brought into the world. And Sarah ordered Abraham to get rid of Ishmael and his mom. See, told you, just like in the Hemet's tale, well, at least with regard to casting out the mother, which, if you do watch, I'm sure you're totally appalled by it, aren't you? Of course you are. And as I said, Yahweh agreed to this. He thought it was a good plan. He agreed that Abraham should abandon his own son and the woman he had abused. No more providing for them. They were left with no home after all the abuse Hagar had already suffered at the hands of Abraham and Sarah. It's disgusting. And no, all the, but Yahweh provided for Hagar and Ishmael, talk doesn't take away from what happened here. This was cruelty upon cruelty from this so-called wonderful couple of Yahweh and Yahweh himself. You see, Yahweh and his followers are no better than anybody else we read about in the Bible. Christians can't see it because they can't allow themselves to see it. If they did, they'd understand how wicked their God really is and how wicked his people were. I don't fault Abraham and Sarah too much, though. This was their culture. It's all they knew. It never occurred to them that any of this was evil. And they were in the same shape Hagar was. They had a taskmaster, too, the wrath for Yahweh. But come on, Christians, you know this is an evil story, right? I mean, you don't have to answer because I know you can't. And I know all your answers anyway. Yahweh's ways are higher. We don't understand the unjustifies the means or whatever. Now, as we know today, <clears throat> today, this would all be quite sinful. A man having sex with his wife's maid? We're shocked by the horror of it. But a long time ago in a kingdom far, far away, it was a okay, right? And so was slavery. And hey, even the New Testament says honoring humans is fine and dandy. Of course, we humans, without any help from a god, have finally realized that slavery is not okay. It's not okay at all. Christians try not to think about what the New Testament says about slavery, or they twist the passages into something other than slavery. I mean, they even do that with the Old Testament. But we know it's wrong. Today, today we know it. At least most of us do. Listen, Sarah was awful, Abraham was awful, and Yahweh was awful. Yet they all get praised constantly, and by the same people who condemn people today for less, far less. And poor Hagar, what a life she had to live. How sad that a good couple, maybe someone among the nations living around Israel, didn't take her as a slave and keep her forever if she really had to live her life as a slave. How sad that someone didn't give her a home and love her. How sad that she didn't have the same freedoms that Sarah had. How sad that Yahweh didn't make sure of it since he's so good and merciful and awesome. And how sad that the Bible never gives Hagar a kind word. Sarah said, cast out the bond woman. Her son's not going to hurt it with my son. Oh, suddenly Ishmael's not Sarah's son, huh? <laughs> Once she gets her own. And the so-called apostle Paul loved Sarah's words so much that he repeated them. And what about you Christians? Y'all don't give Hagar a second thought, do you? She's just a bit player in the tale of your father Abraham and mother Sarah. She's like the person who's dead on the beach when the movie or TV show starts, and we have to figure out who done it. You don't give Hagar, you don't, you don't know Hagar, and you don't give a rat's tail about her. I wish y'all could look at the Bible with a critical eye. But again, I know you can't. After all, you also have a cruel taskmaster to answer to. And he doesn't even grant y'all an audience like he did Abraham and Sarah. So you're just walking around hoping against hope that your decision's please him. Because he won't even let you know. And remember, he didn't get angry about slavery. He didn't get angry about rape. He didn't get angry about child abuse and uh, or child and spouse abandonment. And in fact, hardly approved of all of them. So how in the world you even think you can figure out what angers him and what makes him happy is beyond me. Rape? Sure, you can get away with that. Slavery? No problem. 
shoot, kill babies and you're good in Yahweh's eyes. But please don't, from an automatic reflex, reach out to steady a cart carrying a magical religious artifact. Yahweh struck poor as a dead for that. The Bible's right about one thing it says, it says about Yahweh. His ways are past finding out. But I implore you, Christians, use your own brain and learn to look honestly at the stories and commands in the book you love. The Bible is not a book of lovely encounters with a good and holy God. It's a gruesome account of an evil God who does whatever he wants, as the book says, and doesn't concern himself with who suffers in the process. Listen to me, and please pay attention. If you watch The Handmaid's Tale and it disgusts you, if you find the behavior on that show to be immoral, do not have the hypocrisy to tell the story of the poor handmaid Hagar and not condemn what Yahweh, Abraham, and Sarah did to her. Hagar deserves better from us. She deserves us to speak out against her oppressors, and if we don't, we might as well have raped her and thrown her into the desert ourselves. I apologize for the sunglasses today. I had my second eye surgery and my eye is very sensitive to light. Plus, I forgot to turn my speaker down so you heard some dings, and I'm sorry about that too. But I just can't do this again. I could barely see this time. <laughs> Thank you all. Bye.